Genjin has a number of powerful pyro characters, and it's common for people to be unsure which one they should pull for. Yurimiya often gets sidelined by Hu Tao, and even Yanfei can give her a run for her money. With all this competition, is she worth pulling for at all? Yurimiya was released just before I started playing Genshin, and I loved her right from the start. She has a happy, bubbly, and bright personality, and is generally just a ray of sunshine whenever she shows up. She's the daughter of Inazuma's firework makers, and she fits that theme flawlessly. Her design is super cute, and she stands out as one of the most unique Genshin characters visually. Her first story quest was fun, but also felt a little jarring. It's about a fugitive from Inazuma who had left the country to travel and was living abroad when the Sakoku decree came to effect. He's a fugitive because he returned to the country while the borders were closed. Note that this was his only crime. One of Yoimiya's defining traits is that she loves helping anyone and everyone, so naturally she spends her time harboring this fugitive. Despite this whole situation feeling a little over the top, the quest does a great job of showcasing her innocence, her desire to help people, and her playful personality. I haven't had a chance to play through her second story quest, which was released in version 3.7, but from what I've heard, it's another light-hearted tale about Yoimiya making friends and helping people. People have said that it was very well done and has a moving conclusion, so I'm looking forward to it. I waited for Yoimiya's rerun for almost an entire year and was worried at the time that I wouldn't be able to get her. Hoya seems to have a habit of running her banner very close to other highly sought after characters like Kazuha, Zhongli, Raiden, Nahida, and so on, and I was running low on Primo gems. Thankfully, I was able to get her and she's been one of my favorites ever since. The most common character Yoimiya is pitted against is Hu Tao, so let's take a look at her as well so we can see how they compare. Early on, I was actually not a fan of Hu Tao. By the time I met her, I had forgiven Gigi for ruining my Kokomi wishes, so when I came across the history between the two, it made me feel zero interest in her. Hu Tao had traumatized Gigi by repeatedly kidnapping her with the intent to basically burn her alive. Not cool at all, though she did learn to later regret her actions. I've eventually come to grudgingly forgive her for this, though she's still a bit of an oddball in a way that often feels a little forced. I did wish on Hu Tao's banner, however, because I really wanted Toma. And as I've mentioned in my previous video about Yamiko, Hoya knows when you don't particularly care for a 5 star, so I ended up with a C1 Hu Tao by the time I had my Toma. So how do the two compare? They have some very obvious similarities, so it does make sense to compare and contrast between the two. Let's compare their playstyle, strength, versatility, and builds. I built Hu Tao straight away since she was my first pyro DPS, but I really didn't enjoy her playstyle at first. She's a polearm user and centers around infused attacks. Her skill infuses her normal and charged attacks with pyro. Her charged attacks are particularly strong, so it's generally recommended to rely on them whenever possible. Her first constellation makes a huge difference since it stops her charged attacks from consuming stamina. The big quirk to her kit is that she hurts herself when using her skill, and her damage output gets much higher when she's at low HP. This was a big part of why I found her uncomfortable despite having her all-important C1. Noelle was my only shielder, so her playstyle felt extremely risky, and Barbara was my only Hydro character at the time. Xing Chou was nowhere to be seen, and Yilan had not been released yet, so Hu Tao ended up benched for several months. Eventually, as I got more characters who fit with her, I found a team which made Hu Tao feel much more comfortable. I enjoy her most with Xing Chou, Yilan, and Layla, since this team has stellar off-field Hydro application plus a very strong shield. In contrast, Yoimiya's playstyle felt very enjoyable right from the start, and is fairly unusual for a bow character. Most bow characters rely exclusively on their charged attacks or their skills and bursts, with a couple of niche exceptions. Yoimiya breaks from this trend. Her skill infuses her attacks with pyro, so her preferred playstyle centers around her normal attacks. This makes her feel very easy and low effort in comparison to many characters, as you just tap away and see the big red numbers explode onto the screen. Overall, while they fulfill a similar role, the general experience of using them is a stark contrast. Yuimiya's playstyle is amongst the least complex and most comfortable in the game, while Hu Tao's takes a lot of getting used to, it's high risk, high reward, especially if you aim to benefit from animation cancelling. If you like a challenge, you might find yourself enjoying Hu Tao more. If you prefer a smoother experience, then you'll probably prefer Yuimiya. Both characters are solely intended for a main DPS role and are particularly well suited to vaporize teams with Xing Chou or Yilan, or with both of them together. They are both well suited to single target boss fights rather than battles with mobs of enemies, though Hu Tao is marginally more capable of hitting multiple enemies at once. 
Hu Tao does benefit from a noticeably higher damage ceiling to compensate for the higher risk. On the other hand, Yuimiya has little more range in battle which can be a big win in some situations, though she does still like to stay fairly close to her enemies most of the time. Their bursts are also very different. Hu Tao's is a big nuke which does a lot of damage, while Yuimiya's is much less impressive and just deals a small amount of damage and then triggers coordinated attacks with other characters for a short duration. Since they're both main DPS characters, they're not particularly versatile and are not worth using in other roles. They are also both fairly dependent on having a strong shield. Yomiya needs one because it's vital for her third and fifth attacks to land since they're her strongest ones. Hu Tao works best with one simply because her strength relies on running around at low HP, particularly at C0 when she'll also be at risk of running out of stamina and unable to dodge. Hu Tao is a little pickier with her teams, since her low HP playstyle doesn't generally work well with most healers. Many off-field healers Healers, such as Kokomi would heal her too quickly, reducing her damage output. Meanwhile, Yomiya will happily work well in a team with healers, though to make most of damage, she definitely relies on having a strong shield to protect her. They also have different build requirements. Hu Tao's ideal build leans on HP instead of attack, which is often slightly easier to build, while Yomiya's just wants a standard pyro DPS build. Due to her unique playstyle, Yomiya makes great use of weapons and artifacts which are sub-optimal for other characters, such as the Rust Bow or the 4P Shimanawa set, which can make a decision easier when building her. It's also important to note that Yoimiya feels complete at C0, while Hu Tao C1, as I mentioned before, is an absolutely massive upgrade. I've only experienced her C0 gameplay in occasional story quests or events, and it was painful to say the least. If you find that you like her, her C1 is definitely one of the few 5-star constellations that I'd say are actually worth aiming for. In the end, they're both extremely strong pyro DPS characters who can be fun to play around with. While Hu Tao will be more powerful when given a similar level of investment, Yuimiya is more than good enough to clear the hardest content in the game, so all that really matters is which of the two you have more fun playing with. While Yoimiya and Hu Tao tend to take the spotlight in any discussion about Pyro main DPS characters, there are others who should be included in the conversation. Klee is another 5-star character who can be surprisingly powerful. Her big downside is her gameplay. Her animations and targeting feel clunky and awkward, and to get the most out of her, people often use some finicky animation cancel techniques, which can be difficult to pull off consistently. Her attacks also have a fairly short range, so once again, a shield is vital to avoid being interrupted and knocked around. Despite this, she can still be a fun character to play, particularly if you love her personality. I often find myself playing as her because it's just fun to go around joyfully exploding anything and everything. In terms of investing your primos in raw power and smooth gameplay, she's generally less worth it than either Yoi or Hu Tao, but on the plus side, being a catalyst user means all her attacks are pyro, and she's quite literally one of the cutest characters in the whole game. Yanfei is a 4-star character who is seriously underrated. She's a catalyst user like Klee, but has a much smoother playstyle, especially at C6, and she can be almost as powerful as Yoimiya. I haven't gotten around to building her on my main account, since I have all three of Yoi, Hu Tao, and Klee build, but my partner's Yanfei is incredible and is regular in his Abyss teams, which consistently gets 36 stars. She's also one of my main DPS characters on my alt account, although her build there is still a work in progress. She's also a little more versatile than the others we've talked about. Her C4 adds a very strong shield to her kit, and as a catalyst user, she can hold thrilling tails or prototype amber, so she's actually viable as a support for shielding, buffing, and healing. Her shield also makes her DPS teams much more flexible than others, since she provides her own interruption resistance. Her other constellations are highly valuable too, since they take the edge of her stamina-hungry playstyle. If you happen to have her, especially at high constellations, then she's well worth considering as an alternative to the 5 stars. It would also probably be good to talk about this guy, but he keeps on running my 50-50, so I refuse to acknowledge his existence. Genshin is not a particularly difficult game, so any discussion which ends with this character can be more powerful than the other ones will definitely get them instead, kinda misses the point. All four of the pyro DPS characters we've touched on are strong enough to beat the hardest content. When you're trying to decide which to go for, the only real questions are which playstyle you prefer and whether you have the right characters in your roster to help them shine. If you love Yoimiya, go for it. You will absolutely not regret it. If you don't, maybe one of the other characters is a better fit. Until next time!